Hey, welcome back to Believer 24-7. Welcome and thank you for joining this program here. This week I'm here with Brian. Yes, you Sarah, are. Brian. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> and, uh, you know, what? I'm so glad you can be here and join us uh, this week. Uh, again, we know we're Believer 24-7. We're a program that, you know, that we want to share the Word of God, which is the Bible, with you. And, uh, you know, believe that... That, uh, that this is a message here that everyone, that there's important values and everybody must know right. that this is a very guide very to live in life and uh, walk in everyday life here on earth. Yep, God's provided us with so much in, this, in His Word. He's given us so many things that pertain to life. People uh, sometimes say they wish they had a handbook that would tell them how to live life or there's no handbook uh, to mm -hmm. go by for this life. Well, they're wrong because God did write a handbook. He That's told right. us the principles that He's laid for us in this book right here. You just have to look for them. That's right. So. It may not say handbook to life on the cover, nope. but that's exactly what that's it is. That's what it is. Helps yep. us in every area. That's right. It's so funny, Brian, because it seems like every everywhere you go now, you can find like uh, a <laughs> book of, you know, the dummies book. You know what I'm saying? The dummies book. I yeah. got one for the guitar, yeah. For the guitar. <laughs> dummies guide for the, yeah, for the guitar. Not that I was a dummy, just it, <laughs> I figured true. if they were going to explain it to a dummy, it'd be simple enough for me to understand. So, you know. Yep. Obviously, and you can find one on everything. You know, yep, pretty, pretty much, much now. Basically can, everything. Yep. And so it, it was Maybe good. you got dating. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <that's> <laughs> <laughs> I go full. We're not going back there. Now. I'm sorry. Where, where did you find that at? I, I don't know. I was just walking by. It's. I think it's at any bookstore. I, I'll pick you on up. So you were looking for this book? No, I just saw it. Oh, I was okay. like, there's Marcus. That's Marcus right there. <laughs> no, the dummy? The, no. <laughs> a little All bit right. of a... Well, good. Anyway, um, yeah. So welcome uh, back to the program. Uh, again, you know, you can always look us up on the internet. Uh, email us. Let us know what you think of the program. Please do. Let us know what you think of this program. And uh, if there's any topics or subjects that you feel Be that nice. yeah <laughs> uh, that you want us to address, you know, we'll be happy to consider it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't um, make Marcus cry. Yeah, <laughs> make me be, cry. Yeah. What subject could make me cry? Dating. Never mind. <laughs> Dating life. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. I was going to leave it alone, though. Anyway. All right. Uh, this week. Yes. This we, week, we want to introduce a new subject. Introduce a new person. Right. Right. To someone. To you. That we've gotten to know very well. No. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying um, introduce a new subject, a new topic that right. a lot of, actually a lot of people shy from the subject. Shy away from, well. Yeah. That's, a you lot know, of controversy. A so. very lot. A lot of controversy. Um, in you know among Christians and and uh, fellow believers on uh, the Holy Spirit, right? You know the Holy Spirit, um, Holy Ghost depends on you know how you want to say it. How you want to say it? How religious you want to sound? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Is he myst mystical? Yeah. Ghost? Is he mystical? Is he a cloud that floats around? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people think a lot of different things about him. They don't think a he's lot. A, maybe it's just a concept. You know, right? Not really real. It's just like. A, Something we have in our minds. Mm -hmm. um, people have different ideas, but he right. is a real person. Right. And, and, and I, if anything, today, after, after today's program, uh, we've caused you to help look into this subject. Right. To think about it a little more. But not, I mean, you can find a book on the Holy Spirit. You can right. find well, any you kind can find of lots research. Lots of books on the Holy Spirit. And, and depends on who wrote that book could persuade you from what the actual Bible says. What I can tell you to do, what I, my suggestion is, is to know him from this book right from, from the from the word of god right from here know what jesus said about him know what right. paul said about him right. right and so don't you know and if anything if anything from this program don't don't think that everything that we say about and talk about the holy spirit is everything about him no we can't cover we, it all once no how can we how can you uh how can you describe uh uh, Holy Spirit, something is eternal. How can you define an infinite being? <laughs> right. In, in, in 30 minutes. In 30 minutes. <laughs> Ready, go. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Not I, I can't even describe Brian in... No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 30 minutes. I'd like to see you try. That'd be interesting. We did... My fiance and I did a personal assessment test, and we were doing it in our... Uh, premarital classes. Mm -hmm. And we were uh, going through the things, and what they did is they gave her a sheet of, full of like characteristics and they, she had to check off certain for me and I had to check off certain for her mm -hmm. and we switched and got to see what the other person put. Well, no, I'm sorry. We, we kept those. We did our own. We evaluated right. each other then we evaluated ourselves then we switched to see how, how closely we were and it was supposed to tell us what our personality type was like. But it was just kind of funny to see the different things that she said about me. Like saying I was, uh, let's see, 
Hmm, what did she say? I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe she can help us. Maybe she can help us. I can't remember what she said. <laughs> I didn't read the paper. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Do you remember what she said? <laughs> Do you know what we're talking about? Don't know. <laughs> if you don't know that, you know, there she is. Yay, there she wait, is. Robin. <laughs> yeah. This time she, she was a little bit more ready for it. Last time I surprised her. Anyway. So anyway, yeah, we got the uh, personal assessment. It was just kind of funny to see what she, what she wrote down, what I wrote down, and our different thoughts about what each other are. So anyway. That's good. So don't, you know, like I said, don't walk away from today's program say, you know, thinking you know everything. That, or that's, uh, that's what we think, and that's, what, you know, that's the extent of our knowledge on the Holy Spirit. Not that, but I'm saying that that's all there is to Him. Mm -hmm. No. You know, I just want to open, I just want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Right. That's all we want to do today. You know, uh, when you have a new friend, you know, uh, and you meet someone like Brian, if you have a, a friend and, you know, that I have never met before, you introduce me to you, like, hey, Marcus, this is Tom. I'm not going to know everything about Tom in the no. two seconds that, I, that I've or just met him. 30 minutes, eating yeah. dinner with him or something. Yeah, right. there's, there's no way. You know, and, and so that same aspect. Which builds another case that if you want to know the Holy Spirit and you want to get to know God, uh, the Holy Spirit is a part of God that is among us right now. Right. And we need to get to know him. And you can't just spend 30 minutes with him and expect to, you know, no, be really. the super spiritual person. I mean, you're right. never going to be a super spiritual person anyway. Right. But it's going to take more than just a little, I mean, how do you get to know your friends? You mm -hmm. spend hours with them. And if you know the Holy spend. Spirit and you have and you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, well, hopefully today's program can kind of be a refresher. Right. There you go. You know? Remind you of your first, yep. first encounter. Or maybe help you share the Holy Spirit with someone else that you know. There you go. You know, so uh, and so today, let's go into the Bible today, uh, John chapter. Normally we go into the Quran, but this week we decided to pull out the Bible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. John chapter fourteen <laughs> from the Holy Bible, no. <laughs> God's word. <laughs> We're gonna go. <laughs> I was joking. Guys. John fourteen, and uh, I'm gonna read uh, verse fifteen. Okay. Right. That's where I'm at. Okay. If you love me, this now this isn't Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Now some Bibles say comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm -hmm. And then I want to skip Brian real quickly, uh, from, from that point to verse twenty, uh, let's see. You skipped a good verse. Uh, 17? 17, yeah. Well, I'm going to come back to it, Brian. Okay. I want to go from... from <laughs> I want right. to hold off right there. Okay. And from verse 16, I want to go over into chapter 15 and read uh, verses 20, verse 26. It's just one verse. But when the Helper comes, whom I... Now, Jesus is still talking, and he's still talking about the same person, the Helper or the Comforter, right. comes, whom I shall send to you, the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father... He will testify of me. Now, now, right here, Jesus refers to the comforter or the helper as the spirit of truth. Right. Well, if we go back to where we started reading that in John chapter 14, let's read verse, let's pick up in verse 17. It says, the spirit of truth. Remember that in verse 15 and verse right. 26, he called the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father and testifies, and of, testifies of Jesus. Right. So that explains a little bit about the spirit of truth. So now we take that same, that same term, the spirit of truth, and we learn a little bit more about the spirit of truth, who's the helper and the comforter, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. And verse 18 is, is, is great for you and I. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Right. Amen. That, that, that's awesome. Uh, uh, and here, you know, why, why, in my particular Bible, in the New King James Version Bible that I'm reading, it calls the Holy Spirit, in verse 16, a helper. Why would we need a helper? Well, one reason is in verse 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. There's a, we need a helper to help us follow the commandments. Commandments. And what is, what is in, the, in the New Testament talking about after you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, one commandment we have we followed, Jesus have implored or has urged us to follow is the commandment of love. Right? Amen. And it says, I leave you one commandment, and that's that you love one love. another. 
And it also says that the love of God is shed in your, abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Right. I think that's in Corinthians. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I could find it, but I don't. Okay. And, and, uh, and it says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Um, and, and it says, and that's why we have to have a helper. You know, I, I, there's, there's no way, Brian, um, within my own knowledge and within in my, own, in, in my own self, when I say myself, my own capacity, my own ability, yeah. <laughs> that I am able to you're, you're keep... You're acting like this is really hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, well, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just saying that you, you, know, it's good, you, you need a helper. Mm -hmm. A helper we to help in walk in our, in our Christian walk. Right? <laughs> and so, and I just wanted to introduce you that Jesus Christ sent us a helper. Sent us a helper. Because he knew we needed a helper. Right. Because he needed a, he needed the Holy Spirit. Right. When he was on earth. Absolutely. So, amen. Absolutely. I mean, to, to, I mean, if Jesus needs a helper, you know, <laughs> I know that I'm going to Paul said, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens your mortal bodies. So right. it's in, he's in us too. Right. The same Spirit that dwelt in Christ dwells in us. Mm -hmm. So He gave us ex ex the Holy Spirit is the uh, the tools or the equipment that Jesus used mm -hmm. that He also gave us to use. So right, that's how He's our helper because He helps us just the way G He helped Jesus. So. And here Jesus talks about in verse sixteen. He says, "I will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever." Mm -hmm. So here that kind of takes away the cloud mystical right um, character that some some people. Um, may have a, a belief or thought of the Holy Spirit as a as a cloud that just hovers. You know, we think of, mm -hmm. when we say the term Holy Ghost. Um, we're not actually talking about you know some kind of a we, you know horror movie type ghost. Right. Well, no. You know, we're talking about He's a spirit. A spirit. Is what he is, right. right. Um, a lot of times in early Bible translation, there was lack of the word spirit um, in, in some of the interpretation. Not all. And so they use the word term ghost to describe that that a spirit being, hmm. and so that's why you get, sometimes you get off on the term Holy Ghost, um, but it is a spirit, right? Um, and if you you can go and do all your research and get ghost and spirit in, in the context of this Bible, and you can same thing. you get you end up at the same point, right? So uh, now it says here I will I will pray the Father and He will give you another. So here Jesus says it's a it's a, it's already a done deal. He says, and he will give you another. So you don't have to believe. That's a promise. Yep, it's yep. a promise. A promise of what? Of, our, of being saved, of, our, of our being our salvation. Because it clearly says here in verse 17 of John 14, in verse 17 it says, The Spirit of truth, talking about the same Holy Spirit, the Helper and the Comforter, whom the world cannot receive. Now, uh, previously, Brian, in, in, in other programs, we've mentioned, we've kind of talked about what is the world. Mm -hmm. The right. world being a people who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. People who have not confessed with their mouth and believed with their heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for our sins and that God raised Him from the dead. People who have not made that confession and have not believed that in their heart is in the world. Lost. Right. They're not saved. Right. Non-saved, non-believers um, uh, is Still described as the world. Now, okay, say, okay, well, someone's asking a question. Okay, I'm not in the world. I've, I've made that confession. I believe in my heart. Okay. And someone else is saying, okay, I'm in the world. Well, for the people that are in the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. This is the Spirit of Truth. This is the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive. So you can't receive Him as a worldly person. So you have, the steps would be receive Christ first. Right. And then you can receive the Holy Spirit. Right. So then for the person who is a believer and who right. does, who has made that confession, and I believed in their heart, well, you can receive the Spirit of truth of the Holy Spirit. And God wants you to. And, and I like, man, I love it. I love it when the Bible says because. I'm a why person. Uh, a lot of times when I was in the service, Brian, uh, you know, you're, you're trained to just do a task. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trained to, okay, your supervisor comes around and says, okay, Marcus, do this. And you're, and you're trained to just to do it. Well, that was kind of hard for me to get a hold of, Brian, because I always want why. You know, I always wanted to say, <laughs> You know, I always want to know why. What's the purpose? Am I going to waste my time or is it a meaningful task? Right. And so I always love when the Bible says, you know, because. Because I'm, I like, I'm a why person. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do I need to do that? Because it, neither, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. 
and also part of the answer question why because that he may abide with you forever but well number one he's a helper he's a comforter um, you can look in the word of God and you can find many uh, synonyms for who the Holy Spirit is right. and uh, but again we're just introducing you to the Holy Spirit this is because this is this is and this is the why because why can't the world receive him because they neither sees him nor knows him in other words I mean, if, if you don't have, if you don't understand uh, Jesus Christ, uh, that uh, if you don't believe in your heart, because the reason why you said it earlier, Brian, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if you can't get a hold of the fact that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, right. how in the world are you going to be able to believe that the Holy Spirit right. is here to abide in you? Because he testifies of Jesus. Right. So right. first you have to believe it. Cause, I mean, he's the one who causes you to believe, Right. actually. He's the one who causes you to be convicted of your sins right? so that he can draw you to righteousness. Right. Okay. And, and actually, most people say convicted of your sins. That's, most people look at it in a negative aspect, but that's actually a good thing because it's, oh, a, right. it's, a, good, it's a check. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good um, a boundary. Well, it's you know? pulling you away from death. Yeah, it's right. pulling you away from the Absolutely. wrong direction. He's helping you. Right. right. Anything on a map that would point in the right direction you would see as a benefit, not as a, as a, as a hindrance. So right. that's why we see those Holy Spirit's conviction as a benefit right. because it's pointing us in the right direction, getting us to the point where we need to be in point. Right. Like the kind of map in a point B. In a well, point if, you're, if you're driving down the road and, and uh, someone's standing on the side of the road with a sign that says bridge out, you know, yeah. that's, 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 a a pretty, that's, a pretty, that's a key person right there in that pivotal time in your life to adhere to. Right. Because if you don't adhere to that person holding the sign that says bridge out, tell you what, you're going to run off the bridge, and who knows what happens after that. You know, someone's trying to help you. Same way in your life. You know, you, you come to a, a point in, in, in your life and, and you sin, you know, the Holy Spirit knows what sin is. Where it's leading. Where it's leading to. leads to death. And so he's standing there on the side of your road of life, holding the sign that says, hey man, bridge bridges out. out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you got you to gotta turn around. Turn around, Amen. you know, you made a wrong turn somewhere, go back, and, and get back on the like right you. track. See, see, he's there before you ever get saved. Right. And then you get saved, and then he becomes your helper. Mm -hmm. And then there's another step, which we can talk about later, perhaps, where he becomes part of you. Right. He's inside you, so. Inside you. Right. But right now, I just want you to, I want you to know that there, who the Holy Spirit, uh, not, not who the Holy Spirit, but, but really I just want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. Uh, like I said, my heart, my hope is that you go and read more from this and you can start here, with, start with here what Jesus, Jesus introducing the Holy Spirit to his disciples. Why did he introduce him to his disciples? Right. Well, be, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just asking oh. <laughs> you. No, why did he, why was he talking about it right here? He's talking about, um, he's talking about asking. Anything in my name, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And we know that uh, keeping His commandments is a requirement for us to receive uh, from God because He says you have to abide in Him, right? Right. So He's saying that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us in knowing what to ask for mm -hmm. and uh, what to desire from God. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit fuels our desire. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one who keeps our relationship fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's a person just like we are. Mm -hmm. And He wants a relationship that's constantly going, constantly new. Right. He's not satisfied with us having a stale relationship. No. Just like if, if well... Yeah, we won't go there. But <laughs> well, well, when you said that, he's not satisfied with that, with us having a stale relationship with whom? With him. With him. Right. Um, that that, you know, that's 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 kind of clearly what the Bible says here in John 15, what we read earlier. In 26, it says he will testify of me. Jesus said this: the Holy Spirit will testify of me, meaning that he will talk of me. He will talk about Jesus. The Holy Spirit right. talk he about talk Jesus. About himself. Right. He doesn't talk about himself. Um, that that would, Jesus definitely lived an exciting life. Mm -hmm. I right. mean, the miracles and the walks and the travel, you know, from him walking on the water. I mean, that's he had an adventurous life. Right. And so and so that's obviously not a stale relationship. <laughs> right. But <laughs> you know? he had with the Holy Spirit. Right. He had he with was the Holy really Spirit. In tune. Right. Right. And so and so that same Holy Spirit is going to testify of Jesus, and Jesus lived an adventurous life. I tell you what. What are we going to have? We're going to have a, 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 we have fellowship with him. We with can him. also have an adventurous life. Right. And because do, Jesus said, go and do the same works that I did. Mm -hmm. And greater than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Right. So, I mean, he's telling us that, hey, listen, guys, I showed you just like a demo run 
right. of what the Holy Spirit can do through you. Right, right. <laughs> you ever get a you ever get a demo track or something or a demo CD of a, right. a, a, a software computer program or a music track? You know, like, hey, that's pretty good. You know, right. You know, Jesus is like, ah, oh, you guys just got the demo track. You just got the demo track. I'm getting ready to yeah. get ready to bring you to the point where you're no longer going to be servants, but you're going to be my sons. Right. Or you're going to be sons of God, and we're going to bring oh, you a man. new kingdom. So I mean, oh, this man. is just. He, he was just saying. He was just beginning to say, "Hey, look, I'm going to have you somebody who's going to explain this for the. Because right now you're not going to quite understand it. Mm -hmm. But once I'm, well, he didn't say this, but basically this is what he meant. Once I'm raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of God, you're going to see things through a whole new light because I'm going to put you in a new spot, in a right. new position. Right. So I mean, it's just. I mean, when he was talking about the Holy Spirit, I'm sure Jesus got excited because he uh, saw the future. Oh yeah. He saw what it was going to mean to us. Mm -hmm. The disciples may have thought. At the time, what do you mean, right. the Spirit of and, God? And it's so but, funny. I just thought about this idea, Brian. The disciples only knew, they only wanted to hang around Jesus. They only knew Jesus to be uh, a mediator between them and God, right? Right, Jesus was. Yeah. Right, so that's the only, that, the extent of their Christian walk, you know, to say, we can't really say they had a Christian walk because Christ right. hadn't done, you know, hadn't died on the cross yet. Right. They had done the work. But, but all they knew about fellowship with God was only through Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Jesus knew Wait a minute, guys. He's like, y you only y you only know cry you only know God through me. Right. But when the Holy Spirit comes, you're, you're gonna know, know God personally. for yourself. There you go. You know, that's and good. that's that's why Jesus is like, uh, you know, like if you, you ever had some bit of knowledge, and you wanted to share it with a friend or something, you knew, they you, you knew yeah, you're like, ah, uh, you know, uh, like, a, like okay, for instance, we hold surprise birthday parties for friends all the time. You know, I'm not saying Brian and I do yeah, all I the time, but I'm, I'm like, saying, but in, in our in our society, in our culture, I ruined a surprise party not too long ago. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah, you did. That was funny. Anyway. Brian drives. I gotta share that. Brian drives a bright. He used to drive a bright orange truck. I mean, if you're from New Mexico, it looks like the state of New Mexico department highway department. It's bright orange. <laughs> it's like a city truck. Okay. So yeah. it's like an so, orange detour. So cool. there's a surprise going a surprise birthday party for one of our friends. <laughs> And Brian parked. <laughs> I didn't park. Well, I didn't park yet. I don't know the full, if you were parked in the driveway or if you were driving up to the house. Yeah, I had driven by the house and I called my friend, my other friend, my roommate, and I was like, "Hey, where's the house at?" I said, "It's the one on the corner." And he goes, "Well," and he starts explaining to me how to get there from our house. And I'm like, "No, I'm like on the road. How do you get there?" And he goes, "Well, you turn on this, or you tried to explain it from the main road." And I'm right. like, "No, I'm on the side. You're street. on the street where the house I'm like, is at. I'm in yeah. front of the house. Where's it at?" He says, "Um." I'm not quite sure. I said, is it the one on the corner? He's like, yeah, I think so. And I said, okay. So I turned the corner. I'm like, okay, here's the house. I'm getting ready to park. And the guy pulls up. The long story is Brian was, Brian, well, Brian was on the phone trying to get directions to the house. He was parked in front of the house with this bright orange truck. Yeah. And, and, and the plan was that the, the, our other friends were bringing him home. And so there was, you know, they were going to bring him to the house. Everyone's supposed to park down away from right. the street, you know, and be inside the house hiding. And as soon as they saw my <laughs> orange truck, they, they knew what was going on. So anyway, anyway, you know, we got off, we got off on... <laughs> on he wanted to make fun of me. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, uh, okay, so you're, okay, you have a surprise birthday party on Saturday night, and you're at school or you're at work or whatever for your friend on Friday. Right. And your friend's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do for my birthday. You know, you know it's my birthday Saturday. And you know there's this party going to happen. But you you got to downplay it. Yeah, you got you to play it down, you know. And Jesus is like, right. I can like, sit here and talk about it and explain it all I want. But, you know, it's like, you're not going you're not gonna to get it. And, and it's the same way with your friend. You're not going to get it until you're at the surprise party. Then you're going to know what I know. Right. And it's that, that, that same That's idea. What yeah, yeah, what it is there. So I just want to, you know, this program, I know we're running out of time here. But I tell you what, get, get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Go to John chapter 14. I tell you what, because now I, I guess I can kind of feel like what Jesus If you don't know Holy Spirit, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> you know, you gotta, get something to read on them. Oh, my gosh. You know, remember, the world cannot receive them. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. So if right now, you know, we describe who the world is, if, you know, ask yourself the question, wait a minute, am I part of the world or am I part of the people who, uh, who, who, who know Jesus Christ? Right. And love them. And so, you know, Brian, before we pour out, close out this program, we hope to help those people. If you, ask, if you answered the question as you're in the world, right. we want you to help you come over. Yeah. You know, before we leave today, one important step before having fellowship or anything going further with the Holy Spirit, you got to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Right. And so would you lead our viewers today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, you know, there's a very important step. And, uh, right. 
that you have that must be step. taking place. Right, it has to take place because you have Absolutely. to be born again. Absolutely. Which, uh, which we're we always go to the same scripture every time we talk about the subject. Right. We always go to Romans ten nine and ten. And if you've seen half the shows we've seen, you probably know the scripture by heart by now. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and read it again. Romans ten nine and ten it says that if you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a man believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. So we just want to pray along these lines because it's good to pray along the same lines as the Bible teaches. So Absolutely. All right. So we'll just bow our heads right now and just say, uh, just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I thank you for sending your son. And I thank you uh, that you've given me the opportunity to, be com to come into your family and to receive the benefits that you've given to me and, and that you've offered to me. And God, you, you've given me an opportunity to get in the right position with you. And so, God, right now I just confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I, and I, and I confess and I know and I believe that you, you raised them from the dead on the third day for my, for my justification, for my redemption. And, God, I just, I just believe it in my heart. I embrace it and I confess it with my mouth right now. And I thank you, Lord, that I, I'm completely free from all my sins. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. And if you pray amen. that... You've just been born into the kingdom of God. Amen. And you've just been given the first step to receiving the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So he's, he's, you're more open to him. Now you're, you're more, you can be more aware of him. You mm -hmm. can hear him. Absolutely. Because you know his voice. Absolutely. And, 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 and receiving the Holy Spirit is really easy. Just ask him. Right. <laughs> God, Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit and then believe it. Right. And believe it. And all, believe all it really your prayer. Is, I mean, there's, there's uh, an experience called baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit that's in the Bible. And all it is is speaking the words that just begin to bubble up in your spirit. Right. You can go to Acts chapter right. two. Acts chapter two. And so, read and read all about there, right so there. We don't have time to go all right, that way, but, but check it out for yourself. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you for again for joining us on this program with uh, Brian and I. Yep. Uh, looks like Brian's getting ready to go on his Hawaiian vacation. Yeah, Hawaiian vacation. From this point. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Tahiti. Tahiti. <laughs> Tahiti. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great, and it's um, it's springtime. And so, ready I'm excited. I'm ready for summer. Ready to school. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, just to, you know, uh, as as you are entering this summer, just uh, don't forget to keep God number one. That's right. Because uh, keep God lot, first. Summers are busy, and it's easy just to kind of lay it aside. So take a moment vacation for you with Amen. you. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Read yeah. the Bible on the beach. <laughs> See ya. All right, thanks, guys. Bye bye. All right, we did it, Brian. Yeah.